Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another 10 minute tips with Connor Rhodes from slumsociety.co.uk. And today's video is a PCOS special, polycystic ovary syndrome. And we're going to talk a little bit about what it is, but it's a complicated thing. I've only got 10 minutes with you, so I'm not going to go into it too deep. But it is quite interesting, to be honest, because you don't even need to have polycysts, poly meaning many. You don't even have to have any cysts on your ovaries to have the syndrome. It's just what it's called. It's actually a metabolic issue. It's an issue with metabolism and hormones and other things internally that can cause difficulties for ladies with health and weight management. And this is what I do and I help people manage this. So today I've come to talk to you about some of the problems that people can and may experience that you might experience if you're, you're somebody um, that has polycystic ovary syndrome, you might experience not all, these are not all the problems you might experience, I've just put on a few topics because, again, I've just got 10 minutes. If you've got other problems that you experience that, that I don't talk about today, drop it on as a comment. Join in the conversation. We can talk about it for sure. I'm here to talk about some of the problems you might experience, though. And because you know me and I'm here to help you, I'm not here to be a negative Nancy. I'm going to talk to you about what we can do about them. I'm going to talk to you about positivity and improving these situations and success regardless of hindrance. Because it might be making it difficult for you, but I can make it easy for you. And then we can battle it out and we will win. <clears throat> and you can win. One of the problems you might experience if you've got polycystic ovary syndrome is insulin resistance. This means it's kind of like having diabetes, except it's not your fault. You know, it, it means you've got blood sugar management struggles, and it also means that protein and protein absorption and use, use in your body is also a struggle because insulin is not only about carbs, you know. So you can have insulin resistance, and this can cause a whole host of issues for people when it comes to weight and health management. Like, for example, if you try and drop your calorie intake, your blood sugar's not managing correctly, and then you might start to feel weird. And then that might hamper you, because then you feel like you've got to eat something, you know, to fix it. If you're not using your protein properly, this makes it difficult to maintain your muscle mass and muscle tone. This means you're also not getting the correct hunger signals from either carbs and blood sugar and from protein amino acids in your bloodstream sent to the body and brain. This can increase hunger uh, and lower feelings of satisfaction. Um, insulin is also directly related to weight loss as well. And if the insulin doesn't go low enough, then body fat will not be lost. So insulin resistance can hamper weight loss directly as well. You know, what can we do about it though? Because that's what we're really here to talk about, isn't it? Not just what the problem is, but also what can we do? So what can we do about this insulin resistance? Oh, there's a lot we can do about the insulin resistance. There's a lot we can do. Firstly, weight loss definitely helps. Weight loss definitely helps with, um, with insulin resistance. Secondly, exercise helps. Any form of exercise, cardio is great. Walking is excellent. Building muscle and doing resistance training. Oh, that's tip top. Increasing protein intake can help. If your body's not absorbing protein, give yourself even more. So you've actually got a good amount in there and a good chance to actually use some of it to get the amazing benefits that it brings. Right? Increasing dietary quality is proven in studies to help. Sometimes lower GI and sometimes lower carbs. Like eating whole grains and eating less carbs and sugars and added sugars overall. This can also help with insulin resistance, sometimes fasting protocols help. There's, do you understand there's loads of things we can do? Maybe you've got a little bit of an insulin resistance issue, but if we start employing any or all, even if you wanted to, of those tactics, we can win. We can win. Other issues you might experience though, hunger. Literally, again, if you're having insulin resistance issues and protein intake issues and blood sugar issues, this, this is literally food absorption and management issues, which is going to cause hunger issues. Um, and you're not getting the correct satiety signals, again, fullness signals sent from the actual food that you're eating because you're not absorbing it properly. But also there's other issues too with hunger. Um, ladies that have PCOS um, can quite often have lower levels of other hormones as well that keep you full or make you feel full and satisfied, like one's called CCK. And stuff like this, so you've got not only insulin resistance issues, but you've got other hormonal issues and impacts as well. But what can we do about it? What can we do about the hunger? Absolutely loads. Skip back to like three or four videos before this. I made a full, I gave a full speech on all the different things we can do about hunger. You can eat high food volume, so you can make sure that you're eating foods that don't have many calories because you're aiming for the weight loss probably but that you can eat loads of. So it's stereotypically healthy foods like fruit and veg and stuff like this. Again, increasing protein intake so that you can actually use some of it and get it in there. Sometimes changing meal timings and meal frequencies helps with people. You know, sometimes changing calorie intake, either lower or higher impacts hunger differently for people. There's loads of things we can do. I gave an entire speech on it. Another problem 
<clears throat> and if you've got PCOS, maybe you are experiencing this. Um, I will say that around 20% of ev all the ladies that I coach at Slum Society, or of all my female clients, have polycystic ovary syndrome. Be and, and they've come to me because they struggle with weight loss, so now they've decided to hire a professional nutritionist to help them with it because they've tried all of the other standard clubs and skinny watches, weight world, fad diets, juice this, had a personal trainer in the past. None of it's really worked that well. So you need to get a professional on the case. I am literally qualified um, and prepared and practiced and ready and available. And I help people with this every single day. I literally did my advanced nutrition qualifications in polycystic ovary syndrome, literally. Uh, you can have a slow metabolism. Some studies show that ladies with polycystic ovary syndrome have up to a 40% slow metabolism. You know, not all studies show that, just some. A lot of studies show that 20% is quite common. You can have a 20% slow metabolism. What does that mean? Does that mean you're screwed? Nope. Like, for example, let's say you do have a 20% slow metabolism. Let's say you've got a sister, same height and weight, let's say. Let's say she doesn't have polycystic ovary syndrome and she loses two pound per week. If you lost 20% than that, how much would you lose? 1.6 pound per week. Still good. Still working. Do you know what else we can do? We can boost your metabolism. I've made videos about it. There's loads of things you can do to boost your metabolism. Did you know that if you can walk, walking is the thing that boosts your metabolism the most? You can boost your metabolism by more than 20% literally by just walking. Some people can. You have to walk a bit. I'm not saying it's free. You have to walk, well, it doesn't cost money, but it costs a bit of time, doesn't it? I'm not saying, you know, you've got to do things to change and achieve things, but you can boost your metabolism by more than 20% with just walking. Never mind if you tack on some exercise, another thing that boosts metabolism, some muscle toning and muscle building, another thing that boosts metabolism. Did you know that the amount of grams of protein you eat per day, that's the same amount of calories that it boosts your metabolism by? And I'm not saying a lady with polycystic ovary syndrome would eat this much, but I eat 150 grams of protein per day, boosting my metabolism by 150 calories extra per day. Do 10,000 steps plus eat a good protein intake and you can have boosted your, calorie, cal your metabolism, your calorie intake by 400 per day or something. Now we're rocking and rolling, aren't we? We can win, do you see? You might have drawn the metabolic short straw because polycystic ovary syndrome, if you've got it, it's not your fault. It's actually not well understood by science how it's actually caused or where it comes from, but it seems to be a genetic thing that you're born with, so it's not your fault. It's not your fault that your metabolism might be slower and you might be having these issues, but there's things we can do about it. We can get the hunger down, we can get the metabolism up, we can work on dietary and lifestyle things to get the insulin resistance down, health will improve, and then other issues that come from this, like ladies sometimes get skin issues and hair issues and <clears throat> other issues that come from um, changed testosterone levels, which is a downstream effect of insulin resistance. The insulin resistance causes a downstream chain of effects, which then um, causes changes to the testosterone levels, and then they can go too high, and then that can cause other issues, you know? But do you see there's things we can do about it, though? We can win. Do not feel alone. Firstly, again, 20% of everybody I coach um, has polycystic ovary syndrome, so come on down. If you, if you feel like you're alone or you need help or you feel like you're struggling with your health or weight really bad and you're just looking to make improvements and you want to work with somebody that's that understands and that is well versed in this area and you want to be around in a community of other people that are also afflicted with not only these issues but more i've got i've got people with every issue in my program issues that you've not even heard of <laughs> probably and most likely you know and also another thing that's not spoken about enough mental health mental health issues that can come from struggling with health struggling with body weight struggling with skin struggling with hair struggling with hormonal changes struggling with hunger struggling with struggling with more and more different things just making life more difficult than it has to be just putting this little cloud over you that you always feel like you're struggling then this can impact mental health and we all know how difficult it is to do the right things when you're not feeling good again what can you do support either professional support counseling therapy family friends join a community of like-minded and understanding and people going through the same thing who are like you and trying to do the same thing so that you can feel not alone and so, you know reach out to people get support try your best fill your life with happiness don't give in don't lay down and just accept stand up and fight move forward it's for your health and your happiness there can't be a more important or noble thing to work on can there so boost yourself up by being around positive people there's things we can do, do you see? That's my 10 minute tip, I'm at 9 minute 30. Thank you so much. Connor Rhodes from slumsociety.co.uk. If you want help, go to slumsociety.co.uk, see who we are and how we can help you, or send me a message through the social media platform that you're viewing on now. Thank you so much. Here every day, bringing you videos to help you with your fat loss, fitness and food. Speak to you and I'll see you again soon.